Welcome to this practical introduction to web scraping using Beautiful Soup. You may have heard the name before, but it is a commonly used library for web scraping tasks using Python, especially if you're getting started and working on smaller scale projects. Perfect for a practical introduction. In this course, you'll start by understanding some relevant terms about web scraping and the library you'll be working with, as well as giving a quick brush up of basic HTML structure. And then we'll start set up your environment by installing Beautiful Soup, create a Beautiful Soup object and start working with that. You will learn how you can navigate the parse tree using this library, how you can search the parse tree to identify specific information and even how you can modify it so that you would write back out a different HTML document than you initially received. You'll also get an overview how you can handle common web scraping challenges and finally, talk about what you should keep in mind to scrape ethically and which best practices you can follow. I will also have some additional resources for you at the end. Those will be resources on the real Python site that you can use to deepen your knowledge about web scraping if this topic interests you and walking through this course gave you a nice idea of what it's all about. This course is based on a tutorial on the site that also covers a couple of additional topics that I won't be talking about in this course. Specifically, these are using string methods for text extraction, which is really tiring, using regular expressions for text extraction, which is powerful, but can be kind of confusing. I'm cutting out these two points, which are interesting for context, but they're practically not very useful because high level libraries such as Beautiful Soup exist for you to make these tasks easier. So if you're curious, go ahead and read about those on the tutorial. The tutorial also covers how you can interact with HTML forms, such as submitting a form or filling it using another library called Mechanical Soup that builds on top of Beautiful Soup. This is actually pretty cool, so I would suggest you to check it out after you're finished with this course. You'll also learn how you can interact with websites in real time using that same library called Mechanical Soup. Also quite cool. So take a look at that when you're done with the course. The tutorial is called A Practical Introduction to Web Scraping with Python. And if you've downloaded the slides, you can also just click on the title here to navigate there. You'll see it again in the additional resources at the end. And with that out of the way, are you hungry? Let's have some beautiful soup together. Let's get some important terms out of the way before starting with the practical part. If you haven't heard about it before, web scraping means to extract data from websites, usually in an automated manner using a Python script, for example. And this gives you access to a lot of information on the internet that you can use for data analysis or research and other things. You'll hear me talk about parsers and specifically HTML parsers. A parser is a tool that allows you to read and manipulate structured data formats, such as, for example, HTML. And finally, Beautiful Soup is the library you'll be working with. And I've already mentioned it's a high level Python library that helps you with parsing, searching, and navigating HTML and also XML. You'll be working with HTML in this course. One thing to note here that's maybe interesting is that Beautiful Soup does not actually scrape the information from the internet. You'll need to use something else for that. Beautiful Soup doesn't even really do the parsing itself, but it uses a parser to process the HTML, but it gives you a high level interface to conveniently interact with the HTML once it's parsed. This is what Beautiful Soup does, and it's pretty good at it. Okay, so let's get Beautiful Soup installed in your environment. I'll just be working in a terminal, but feel free to use any sort of code editor that you want. I'm working on macOS, so if you're on Windows, your commands in the terminal might look a little bit differently. I'm going to navigate into the Documents folder and into the real Python folder. And then here, I'm going to start off by creating a virtual environment. For this, I'll say python-m vnv, calling the vnv module, and then I will call my virtual environment VNV in this case. Next, I need to activate it. On macOS, I can do that by sourcing the activate script. So I will say source VNV bin activate, and that activates my virtual environment. If you're on the Windows, this command is going to be a bit different. You won't need to call source. And instead of the bin folder, you'll have to go to scripts. Check out our virtual environments resource if you're unfamiliar with these. All right, 
I've activated the version environment and now I will install the beautiful soup library. To do this, I can write the command python m pip install and then beautiful soup4. Press enter. And it's installed very quickly. Now I'm just going to test that I have access to the library by going into a Python interpreter. And then I'm going to try to import BS4. And since I'm not getting an error here, that means I successfully installed Beautiful Soup 4 into this virtual environment, which means that now I can work with it. All right. That's all for setup. Let's create a Beautiful Soup object and take a peek at what it contains. Since this is meant to be a practical introduction, let's dive right in and then talk about what we're doing in just a moment. I'll start by creating a script, which is just going to get us to the point of having a beautiful soup object. And that's what we're going to work with throughout the course. So I'll create a new file. I'll just use Vim for the sake of speed here. And I'll call it soupy.py. And in here, I'm going to import the beautiful soup object from BS4. And then I'll also import the URL open method from urllib.request. This is important because, like I mentioned previously, Beautiful Soup doesn't actually scrape the data from the web. You'll need to use something else for that. Beautiful Soup is just there for giving you an interface for parsing and navigating it. So from urllib.request, I'm going to import URL open. And then I need a URL. So we're going to be scraping http colon slash slash olympus dot realpython dot org slash profiles slash Dionysus, a site that's specifically set up for being scraped. We set that up at realpython, so feel free to scrape this one without worrying about anything. <laughs> Next, I will use the URL open function and pass it the URL. This part is actually what fetches the content from the internet and saves it to the page variable, which then I also need to read and make sure that it's decoded. HTML equals page dot read and then dot decode and pass in UTF-8. I'm not going to talk about this in more detail here why I'm decoding it, but the idea is just to make sure that there's no issues with certain characters that could be on the page. And if you want to go down that rabbit hole about character encoding, we do have resources on the site. It's just a lot to talk about. And not a lot of code to just add to your page.read. Okay, next, we're in the final step. Here, I'm going to create the beautiful soup object by saying beautiful soup. And I need to pass it the HTML that we just fetched from the internet and decoded. And then I also need to pass it uh, HTML parser. I'm going to use HTML.parser, which comes included with Python as well. So this is built in. And there's other ones that you may want to use, such as LXML or another one is HTML5lib. But both of those are external parsers that you would need to install their third-party libraries. So we're just going to stick with HTML.parser. And that's the whole file. I'm going to save it and exit. Now I can go ahead and run this file in interactive mode. i say python-i. Adding this dash i flag to my Python command is going to run the file and then Instead of finishing after it's come to the last line of code in the script, it'll drop me into an interactive REPL session, and then I can interact with the code in there. OK, you can see I'm in a Python REPL, and now I have access to the soup, which is a beautiful soup element. And you can see that this contains some HTML, that, that small script which is wrote fetched from the internet. And if you are confused about the HTML that you're seeing here, just in case you haven't worked with HTML much before, we're going to take a step back and take a look at the basic HTML structure so you have an idea of what you're looking at before working more with the beautiful soup object that you just created.